Hey everyone, it's Adele and Avril from Just Say Scrap, and we are here with Technique Tuesday number 147. Um, today we are going to be bringing you Melissa Esplin like we promised. So we are going to be diving in to handwriting this month. So here we cool. go. So today we are going to be focusing on our Melissa Esplin, the penmanship with Melissa Esplin. And as you can see here, I actually have it in one of our charcoal 8.5 by 11 albums. Um, and it works perfectly with our three ring binder here. So what we're going to start with, I just want to show you kind of how this looks. So you've got your table of content when you open it. And we're going to start with the uppercase print. So that's going to be our first. Um, we're going to basically go one to five this month through this. So we're going to use uppercase print is going to be our first starting spot here, I guess you could say. So. Um, when you get your book, just so you know, you're going to have a reference guide. It's going to have your vocabulary. She's going to go through what exactly some of her things mean. And you can always refer back to this page as you are working with your book. Then we're also going to do the building and embracing your penmanship. So these are the, the 10 steps that Melissa Esplin has laid out for us just beyond like when you're practicing and, and what you kind of should be following. This is your guideline. So number one is going to be embrace your mistakes. You will make mistakes. I still make mistakes all of the time, um, but it's practice that makes perfect. So mistakes, mistakes will happen, but that's okay. Also, number two is use a pencil. So if you aren't sure about how you want to start something out or anything like that, write it out in a pencil first and then erase it after. Three is use a pen you love with smooth flowing ink. So what I use for this and which close to my heart was so gracious enough to gift us with is these beautiful pens. This is a journaling pen. Um, this is the black 0 0.05 one. We also have a 0 0.03, a 0 0.01, all in black. And then we also have our pewter ones, which you can see the color difference here, the pewter. This is the 0 0.05, 0 0.03, and then also a 0 0.01. So I'm going to keep with the black one for now. Um, so this is my smooth flowing ink pen. Number four is test, 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 which is really what you want to do. All papers are different. So you really want to test the quality of your paper with whatever marker you are going to use or pen. Number five is write in all uppercase. So when you really want to fill that space, use uppercase. Um, and that'll help you, especially if you don't have a lot to write. If you, if you're writing in uppercase, it's going to kind of fill in your space a lot more. Write on a stable surface. I've got a stable surface here and I'm actually going to be working right on my Versa mat too. So that's a good thing that I have. Number seven is don't rush. You're going to see while I'm doing this video, I'm going to actually speed it up. So it actually says social media videos, speed up calligraphy and handwriting 99% of the time, basically. So I'm going to speed things up and you're going to see that I'm going faster, but take your time when you're doing this. Oh, look, number eight, take your time. Don't rush and take your time. Number nine is organize your thoughts ahead of time. So it's always good to have some scrap paper around and also hold your pen properly and use a light touch. So this is going to be, I think, the most important. And that's actually what she says, too. So just to show you, you want to use a tripod grasp. So you're holding the pen between your index finger and your thumb. And the barrel of the pen should be resting on the first knuckle of your index finger. So it's right here, laying on it like that. The thumb should not be wrapped around the pen with the barrel resting in the pit of your thumb and index finger. So don't, don't have it here. Don't have your thumb like that. That's bad. Use a light grip, light touch and light grip. Holding the pen correctly will also allow you to use your whole arm to move the pen as opposed to just your fingers and giving those smaller finger muscles a break while the whole arm takes over. If you've already formed bad grip habits, you can change those habits with time and practice. Time and practice. A good grip will help you write for longer periods of time without cramping or pain. Allow the paper to float up to touch the pen rather than driving the pen into the paper. Using a few sheets underneath your writing paper as padding can also be helpful. So those are the 10 uh, tips before we get started. So now we're going to dive right in. So this is penmanship. This is the uppercase print. So we're once again, uppercase. Uppercase is what's the best to 
um, fill all those small spaces that you've got with a little bit of writing. So I'm going to actually take these out of my binder and I find this is a lot easier when I'm going over things. Um, just to, so I can practice, I'm going to take out these first few sheets and I'm going to put this to the side and I'm also going to grab in, which I actually have in the back in, um, an eight and a half by 11 page protector. I'm going to grab out one of my tracing papers. So these are perfect because they're see-through and you can have fun with them. So we're going to start here. So I'm actually, like it said, leave a few pieces of paper under, but the Versa mat is going to give me that nice surface to have underneath it. So as you can see here, we're going to start here. Um, you have your vocabulary that is in here. And then she's going to show you that each of these sections that we're going to go through are going to start with your basic strokes. So that's what these are. And then she talks a little bit about it. So just as a practice, I'm going to bring my tracing paper up here because you can move your tracing paper. I'm going to make sure that I have the tripod hold, which is right here, right? And everything else is loose. My other fingers are loose. And my arm is able to move as well. So what I really like about this too is that she actually has arrows pointing exactly where you need to go. I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see right up on top where I am doing this. So, all right. And... Just put that over there. And once again, remember, I'm going to speed this up as well. So you're going to want to get that basic stroke. It's not going to be perfect at first. See, that was really shaky. Just going to move over a little better. So as you can see, I went across the whole thing. They're not perfect, but I tried. And that's basically what matters. And then I can go here and I can kind of do the same thing. So I can just practice my lines. And once you're done practicing one, you go on to the next. So as you can see, don't rush, practice, practice, practice. I'm going a little faster than I normally would just for this video, but I just wanted to show you practice makes perfect. All right, so then you have your letter groupings as well. So she's going to tell you to start with specific letters because they have the same strokes in them. So we're starting with this group first. So take your paper and once again, practice those strokes from above. And as you can see here, it actually says one, 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 two, one, two, three, four. It'll show you exactly which way to draw your strokes. So when I'm following this, I always want to pick my pen up on a new stroke. So one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, until I get the hang of it. And it's going to kind of start to come naturally once you practice a lot. Then this says each of these letters has one diagonal line. So these all were straight. These were now having diagonals. So as you can see, I went back there and I wanted to redo a few of them because I didn't like how I did them the first time. So once again, practice makes perfect. Now we're going to go on to the ones that have a curve in them. These are more difficult for me. So you can see this grouping right here. So you can see it's not perfect, but I did the best I can. And once again, I would continue to go over and over and over again. But for the purpose of this, I am not. And then you also have your um, letter system here and also some of your punctuation here. So. All right, that's just practicing some of that stuff. So now these are on a much larger scale than you would ever be doing. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to flip over and this, it says, use the 4MM lined guide. And what that actually means is if you go to the back of the book here, this is the 4MM lines. So this is what would be good to help you out for um, these particular ones. This is also the 4MM height, just kind of showing you. So this is, we're going to get into this a little bit more um, later on in the book, but just showing you that she's got the guides in the back. So that's what she's referring to when she says that. So.
so. So first it's gonna say, let's start with the basic strokes. So these are the exact same things that we did in the very beginning, but on a much smaller scale. It also says remove this page from the book and lay it on a flat surface with the tracing paper over it. So that way it'll really help you get your hand into it. Uh, if we actually flip right back to the front of the uppercase print, it will say tools and what to do. But it will also say when you start out, I recommend tracing through the larger examples with a .05 pen, the one I was using. You'll find that the worksheets will feel more comfortable and will look cleaner with a smaller .01 or .03 tip. So kind of that's what I'm going to actually move to here. So I'm going to show you um, a .03 in the black, and I'll actually show you the .01 in the pewter. So you can kind of see the different colors between that. But that is what we're going to work with here, and I'm going to start up top on these, um, these basic strokes, and just so you can kind of see what the difference looks like. And this is on a much smaller scale now. So as you can see, I kept practicing and moving my sheet around, and that is kind of what I got here. Um, what I also really like about this is this is actually all handwritten as well, so you can actually see differences between each letter that is written, because these are actually written by Melissa, and you can see the variations that happen throughout the page. So that was with my .03, and now I'm going to just do a few of these as well with just um, the .01, so you can really see the difference here. And if you also forget how to do a stroke when you're doing it, look back at your sheets before, because remember, it'll tell you exactly how to use them. So this is, the A goes down, down, and across. So those are little things that you really want to remember while you're doing this. So I'm going to go down first, down, and across. And actually, you can see how light the pewter is, especially in the .01, but it really does work. So you can see I can continue on and, you know, I kind of followed exactly what I was doing, but you can see that it really, it stayed. It's a little hard to see. I'll go back to the 0 .03. Um, but I just want to show like the ampersand, like that's one of my worst ones. So I'm going to pull that in here as well. So my phone accidentally died on me while I was doing the ampersands, but let me just do a few more to show you. So I also find when my elbow is also nicely on the table and like it gives me a little bit of a support when I'm moving my hand, that also is really nice, so. So as you can see, kind of as I'm going along, they are getting better, but like they're not perfect, but that's okay, that is what practice is for. Um, so you've got your sheets here, so you've got both of them. And then the next thing that is in the book is um, uppercase print and putting it onto your projects. So, just to put this back in here. So it kind of tells you like how you can also add it to your albums. So this is just the very, very beginning. This is just, once I said, like once again, like I said, it's uppercase print. So we're gonna be going through this whole book and kind of be showing you exactly how you can add handwriting to your pages. Cause I know a lot of people out there hate their own handwriting, but honestly, your kids, your grandkids, like your generations to come are going to want to see your handwriting. And if you can really make it nice and kind of play around with it and, and find something that you love, why not write? It's so much better than printing it out on a computer or anything like that. Like your handwriting is what makes everything so unique. So give it a shot. Um, and yeah, so this is the book that we're going to be using for the um, whole month of July. If you would like to get it, you can get it on our website, but it's the Melissa... Penmanship with Melissa Esplin. There actually is a bundle with it, so you can go look at that as well. Um, and we'll see you next Tuesday. And that's Technic Tuesday. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, please let us know. Also, if you haven't seen already, our weekend is going to be August, or our day crop is going to be August 22nd. Mm -hmm. so, so if you'd like to join us, you can check out details on our Facebook page or our blog, or you can place a $50 order on our website before tax and shipping. So, all right. We'll see you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye. Seven. I think she's shrinking. You're getting small. Oh, there she is. You have your, oh. um...
looks like a fuzz head how to join or just place a 50 dollar order before tax and shipping on our weekend so all on right our weekend on, on our, our website <laughs>